This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this movie, we're going to take a look at how to build a basic structure. Now, a basic structure can be anything from a house to a tent. The basic structure that we are going to make is going to be a building. And we're going to model this building using polygons. I'm going to start by creating a primitive polygon cube. So I'll choose Create, Polygon Primitives, Cube. Choose the Move tool. And when it's displayed, we can see that the Move tool itself is centered inside of the cube. What I really want is to move the pivot point of this cube down to its base. I can do this by pressing D and then press V, which turns on the snap to point. And I'll just grab the Y axis and drag that down to the cube's base. I'll release them both. Then I want to take the cube and snap it to the grid plane. And we're going to use that grid plane as an artificial floor. Now with the pivot point centered and placed at the base of the cube, I can scale it uniformly from the bottom out. Before I get started, I'm going to change my menu set so that it is polygons. Right now, the menu set is animation. We'll switch, and now I get all of my polygon tools. Let's scale the cube up so that it resembles more of a building structure. And we'll do 5, 10, and 5. And we'll zoom out to take a look at that and go into shading mode, which is 5 on the keyboard, or we can choose it from the panel. Next, let's add some divisions so that we have geometry that we can manipulate. The cube itself has retained the history that was used to create it, and we can access this and increase the number of subdivisions on the cube. This is located in the channel box under the inputs. So if we click on Polycube, we can see that we have settings there for the subdivisions. I'm going to change my subdivisions to match my scale. And now we have a nice, even, and uniform subdivided cube. I'm going to get rid of the bottom two rows. And I'll do this by right mouse clicking and choosing Edge from the marking menu. And that enables me now that I can select my edges and I'll double click on a single edge to select the entire row. I'm going to grab that one and we'll grab the one underneath it and choose Edit Mesh, Delete Edge. And now that establishes the bottom floor. My next step is to add some windows. I'm going to go into a side view and again use my marking menu to now choose faces. And I'm going to draw a marquee to select every other face. By using the marquee selection, we not only selected the front of the building, but we also selected the back of the building faces as well. I'll switch to the front view and do the same thing. I'm going to hold Shift to make sure that I don't lose my selection from before and grab the rest of the soon to be windows. We'll go back and we'll make sure that we have all of our faces selected, and we do. And now I'll extrude those faces inward in order to get the look of a window. I'll choose Edit Mesh, Extrude. And we can take the Z axis of the Extrude tool and just move it in in order to get that window effect. Now this works the same for every window because we are in a local mode. There's a little icon right here that floats if we click on it, it'll switch to a world axis, and you can see how it matches down here in the, in the viewport itself. 
clicking on it again will take us back to the local mode. I want to add another extrusion that will separate the bottom floor from the upper floors. To do this, I'm going to add an edge loop. I'll choose Insert Edge Loop. And we'll just click on an edge. And we'll just kind of guess about where that should go. That will be good. And then I'll just choose the Select tool to finish out the tool. And I'm going to select all of these to create kind of a concrete extrusion. Again, that, use that marking menu to select a face. And this time I'm going to select two faces in a row. And on the very last face, I'll double click. And that will select the entire edge loop or in this case, the entire face loop. With that selected, I can now extrude. And I'll pull it out in the Z, but notice when I do that, that the corners do not match up. We're looking for an identical hard edge like we have here on the existing building. And with this, it's a bit rounded. This is happening because the distance that the angle needs to go is actually longer than these angles here. So pulling it out in the Z is not going to work. I'll just undo that. Instead, we'll use the floating tool or the floating option here for thickness. And I can left mouse click on it and just scroll left to right in order for the tool to add thickness to my extrusion. Point 0.2 is pretty good, we'll go with that. If we weren't getting the exact number that we wanted, we can double click and enter our own value inside there. Next, we'll add a door. Now, right click to go into vertex mode. And I want to select the vertices underneath that concrete slab that we just extruded. I'll grab those two and go to Edit Mesh. And I'll use Merge to combine those vertices. And I'll do the same for the bottom two. But this time, I'll hit G on the keyboard to repeat the last command I just did, which was Merge Verts. I notice, too, that the bottom there is also being merged. We really don't need any of these faces down here at all. I'm going to select just the bottom there, and we'll deselect the top, and we'll delete those. And I can do this just by hitting delete on the keyboard. That'll make it easier to make any more adjustments to the bottom row. I'll switch back to object mode, and we can take a look at how our building is progressing. And we'll go back to faces, and I'll add another extrusion here to start bringing out a door. And this time I'm gonna scale this down. We won't use the actual size of all of those faces. So I'm just going to click any one of the scale icons there, which are the cubes, and that's going to bring up the middle scale manipulator. And we'll just scale this in. We get roughly the shape that we're looking for for a large front door. That looks pretty good. And we'll, again, just roughly translate this down. We're going to have a little bit of an issue here because we have two faces that are going to get pinched uh, and actually end up sitting on top of each other. So I'm going to leave just a little bit of a gap there, and we'll clean that up in a minute. And once that's down, I'll extrude that. Edit Mesh, Extrude, and pull that back. Actually, we could even leave that as kind of a step or, you know, a threshold going into the building if we wanted to. Next, we'll go up to the roof and we'll do a little work on it. We'll extrude this out as well. And I got a little too much there, so we'll just deselect that. And we'll choose Extrude. And again, I want to scale this out. 
And then I'll hit G to extrude once again, and we'll just lift that up. And we'll make this a little bit thicker. And extrude again, and we'll go to scale and bring this in. And we're going to bring it in a little bit farther. And extrude one more time and pull that down so that we have a surface area there for our roof. And we'll switch back to object mode and take a look. That's looking pretty good. If we wanted to add a bit more of a fancier rooftop there, we can actually go back through our history and modify any one of these extrusions. Might take a little guesswork to see which one we need to get to. But I'm going to choose Poly Extrude Face 4 and then turn on its manipulator. And to do that, we can press either T on the keyboard or choose the icon over here from the toolbox. And Poly Extrude 4, we can see, is actually the front door. So let's go up and we'll try, shouldn't be 5, let's try 6. We'll move the offset, there we go, and we'll just kind of bring that in a little bit just to make it a little bit more exciting. And now we have a very simple, very basic building. And to finish it off, we'll delete all of our history. We do not need it anymore. I'll choose Edit, Delete by Type, History. In addition, I want to freeze the transforms just to get those all to go back to zero and to get my scale to go back to one. We'll choose Modify, Freeze Transforms. Give it a name. This concludes our movie on basic structures.